Hey, what's up? It's Paul from Super Easy Apps, and I had a question about how to use the scroll view. So I'm going to show you how to get started with that. Let's drag on the slider, and I'll drag on a. Oh, that's not the one I want. I want this little thing. So we've got the switch, and we get the slider, and we can get values out of this. And I'm going to show you how to get those values. So what you're going to want to do is switch over to the assistant editor. And you have to be careful when you make these constraints, but I am going to be looking at the view controller class. So if you don't see that, then you're going to click up top to make sure that you see automatic. And once we do that, I'm just going to get rid of this code down here and I'll insert one new brace. So just make sure your code looks like this. All right, so I'm going to put outlets along the top. And then I'm going to put actions down below. So when we want to connect a UI, if we just want to know the on off setting, we'll create an outlet and you'll see that this is set to outlet. So for that, I'll call this the on switch. Generally, I like to have a name that's descriptive. Uh, in this case, I don't really have a thing it's associated with. But if it, that was like a power switch, I'd call it the power switch. I'll connect that that creates the outlet. Now, if you want to rename this, you have to be careful because if you change this connection, you can cause Xcode to crash on start. And I'll show you what I mean. So if I change this to, let's say, on off switch, and I just change this value, this is still connected in code to on switch. But when we go to run the app, we're going to see that it crashes. And so if this is the case, there's sort of two things that we need to worry about. You'll see that if we click on this, we have this thread one signal abort. If that's the case, you need to go back into your app. And here we need to make sure that this name matches that. And so if we right click on this, we can see all the outlets that are associated with this. Alternatively, we can see that on this menu right here. And you'll see problems in your storyboard usually or in sometimes in your project if something is sort of out of line, though a lot of times uh, it's not always clear. And so here we're going to have to look into our debug output. So that's this right panel. So hide the other panel. And you can do that by clicking this to turn off the, the variable view. And you're going to see all this garbly gook. This is a stack frame. What we really care about is what's on top of the stack frame, and that's here. And the real message, we're going to see sort of some related context here. So it's the view controller is the, the view that we're on. And then we're going to see that it's not key value compliant for on switch, which means that there's no connection here to code because we renamed it. And so in order to fix this, what we need to do is we need to either close out that connection from this menu, or if you right click on it, you can close it out. And then we can just reconnect it to this new name. Now you have to drag it over to the name or the type. If you drag it to the first part, it's not going to match. So it's only when you move over. And I can show that a little more clearly when I get rid of that. So I'm just going to drag this over and you can see that it sort of connects. When it's on multiple lines, it looks kind of funky. So this is how it should look for you. And that's going to create that connection. You can double check it by right clicking over here on the left and you should see it. Now, I don't want to call it the on off switch. So I'm going to remove the connection and I'm going to switch this back to on switch and I'm going to drag it over, reconnect it. All right, so if we go ahead and run the app, it should no longer crash. And then we can also set up an action for this. So by default, these aren't going to do anything. They're going to be interactive, but they're not going to do anything. So for this, I want to select action. And I want it for the value change. This is going to let me know when this is changing. That's the thing I care about. So let's call this switch changed. Keep it so that it's a a verb. So let's say switch value changed. And then we'll hit connect. So again, if you mess up that connection, you can always right click, you can get rid of the connection for now we're going to be looking at the value changed. So that's this. So if I want to re add it, what I'm going to do is right click and drag over to the function and you should see that it says connect action, it shouldn't say insert. So if it says insert, then you've dragged it not on top of the function. When you do it the first time it auto inserts this code. So now we can print out some value. So since I have a, a class reference to the on switch, I can then get the is on attribute. And so if I want to print this out, 
we can just do this, but I like to have some context, so I'll put this in a string form, and we'll use the string interpolation. So let's just say switch, and then you just type it like this, that will insert the value using string interpolation for us, and I'll go ahead and run it so that we can see what it's gonna do over here. Once we do that, we see the switch, and we can see it's false, true, false. So false means it's off, true means it's on, and then we can have logic based on that information. So that is a UI switch. Now let's take a look at the slider. So for the slider, there are additional properties that we can customize, and I'll show you how to do that after we connect this. So I'm, again, I'm gonna set up the outlet. So this is gonna be our slider, and let's just say this is the volume slider to give it a, a name and some context. So if that's how it is in your app, I like to have these along the top, so I'll just fix the formatting. So that's gonna give us a, a reference to it, which is useful when we wanna use it down here like we did. And for this one, we're gonna right click and drag, create the connection. For this, we have to make sure that we select action. A lot of times I mistakenly connect it so that it's an outlet, and then we have to do it all over again. All right, so what we're gonna do here is call this one the slider value changed, and we'll go ahead and connect it. And then again, I'll do a print statement. So I'll, I'll type it out first. We're gonna do the slider and then we'll do string interpolation. So that's the backwards slash and then the parentheses and then the variable name. We already have this named and connected up top. So I can just say volume slider. And now I'm not getting code complete because this expression isn't complete. So if I finish this out by adding these two characters, it should help me get these values and I can get the current value, which should be a floating point number. All right, so both of these, I would recommend that you look at the documentation, and I'm gonna show you how to get access to that documentation after we test this out. So if I move this around, you're gonna see that the value is gonna go from zero all the way up to one. So that is the default setting. And then if we go over to our right side and we click on the slider, we switch this back to the assistant editor sorry, the attributes inspector. And here we can set a default value, which is in the center, and we can set a minimum. So if I wanted the volume to go from, let's say zero to 10, I would change it like so. And then I would set the, the default value to something like five, so it's towards the center again. So you want that inside the range. And if I wanted to, I could add images and all kinds of fun things. So those are some things that you can customize. I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm just showing you how to get this started and really work with the values. And we can see that the values are gonna go from zero all the way up to 10. So that's how we can work with these sliders. That's how we can access them. That's how we can print out the values. The one thing I do wanna show off is the documentation. So if you're ever concerned or interested in learning more about any of the UI elements in your iPhone app, what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold the option key and you can click on this and that will give you the quick help. From the quick help, we can click on the class reference for more, and that will jump, and it should jump right to the documentation for this. So here, read over this. So pause this video if you've never read this before and read the title. This is gonna give you some insight into why we did what we did. And then if you scroll down, what you're gonna see are all the other things that you can customize, like the on image, the off image, the tint color, and stuff like that. All right, so that's, getting started with the UI switch and the slider. Why don't you try and add a label and then get it to print out the value into the app so that the user can see it on their iPhone instead of right here, or I guess it's, yes, right over here in Xcode. So give that a whirl, let me know. And if this was helpful, click the like button and I'll create more videos like this. All right, thanks so much and have a great day.